going to speak for a few minutes this morning about the topic of a rebuke. Now, rebuking is not a popular subject in the body of Christ, and for good reason. I don't like to be rebuked, although, you know, there have been times in my life where I needed a good rebuke. You know, uh, a rebuke is not a bad thing. The Bible says that God disciplines those he loves, and a rebuke is a form of discipline. It's a form of correction. It's a form of of calling something out sharply. If it's done in the right spirit, a rebuke can actually send you forward in the spirit. A rebuke, a sincere rebuke should lead to a sincere repentance. A rebuke, according to the, to, the, uh, uh, to the dictionary, is an expression of strong disapproval. Look, if I'm doing something really, really wrong, I want to know about it. The Bible says in Proverbs 17, 10, a rebuke goes deeper into a man of understanding than a hundred blows into a fool. So if you're a person of understanding and someone uh, comes to you in a right spirit and offers a rebuke, you should welcome that. You should take that to the Lord. You should receive it in all humility and examine your heart. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3 and 16, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for rebuke, for correction, and for training in righteousness. So I really believe that the Lord himself will use his word to bring a rebuke when we are out of line. But we have to be in the word in order to do that. The Holy Spirit will also uh, allow the Holy Spirit to bring a rebuke or correction. Conviction is what we call it. The conviction of the Holy Spirit is a form of rebuke. He's saying, I don't approve of this. This is wrong. Proverbs 13, 1 says, a wise son hears his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. If you are one who cannot be corrected, you are one who will not receive uh, a discipline from anybody, then you've got probably some heart issues of rejection and or rebellion. Because one who has rejection will not see rebuke as something that can move them forward, but will see that as something that is an attack against their very nature or very character. You understand what I'm saying? Luke 7, 13, 17, 13 says, if your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. If you're walking closely with somebody and you see them going, Jesus, help me. If you're walking closely with someone and you see them going into a pit of destruction, if you really love them, you will offer a rebuke. But that has to come out of relationship and respect and trust that has been earned over a period of time. The Bible says a lot about rebuke. I want to read you an account from the Bible because this really is an example that has spoken to me so much, especially over the last couple of years. For Second Samuel, verse twelve, uh, chapter twelve, verse one, the Lord sent Nathan to David. Now notice that the Lord sent Nathan to David. Many times we feel we need to rebuke somebody, and we can even see them going into a pit. But the, it must be the Lord. That sends us because the Lord knows the right time when someone is going to receive a rebuke. The Lord is the one who prepares someone's heart to receive a rebuke. If the Lord himself, see the Holy Spirit will always try to correct us before he sends somebody else. But if we're not getting it, the Lord will send a flesh and blood person to rebuke. But you must be sent of the Lord. It is not your mandate or your mission to go and correct and rebuke everyone who you see doing something wrong even if you are in close relationship with them. You must listen to me. Thank you, Jesus. You must be led by the Lord to offer a rebuke. Now, you don't need three angels and five whistles and four bells and six harps. But you must have an unction from the Lord. Everything that we do, we should be led by the Lord. And here in Second Samuel 12, verse 1, the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said, listen, You have to use wisdom. This is the second principle. Number one, you must be led of the Lord to rebuke. Number two, you must use wisdom. Nathan's wisdom was to use a parable. Listen, he came to him and said, there were two men in a certain city. One was very wealthy, but the other was poor. The wealthy man had a very large flock and herd, but the poor man 
had nothing except a single small ewe lamb that he'd acquired. He nourished it and raised it together for himself and his sons. From his crumbs it would eat, and from his cup it would drink, and and in his arms it would lie. It was like a daughter to him. There came a visitor, verse 4, to the wealthy man, but he was unwilling to take from his own flock or herd to prepare a meal for the wanderer who had come to him. Instead, he took the poor man's ewe lamb and prepared food for the wanderer who had come to him. Verse 5, David became very angry because of this man. He said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man who did this deserves to die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Then Nathan told David, you are this man. Now imagine David's shock. It was like the blinders were lifted. David was in denial. David thought no one saw my sin. Not understanding that the Lord, or not not being willing to really understand or look at the fact that the Lord saw his sin. He had covered it up from all of Israel. Joab knew. He had uh, Uriah uh, uh, murdered because he got Bathsheba pregnant and had a son through this adulterous affair. And I want you to know something. Principle number three, there is a timing of the Lord. So number one, the Lord must send you. Number two, you must use wisdom. Number three, there is a, a specific timing of the Lord the Lord is long suffering in other words the Lord will wait and wait and wait for you to catch on before he will send somebody this was at least nine months between the time that David sinned and the time that Nathan was sent of the Lord to rebuke him it was at least nine months why because David committed the sin with Bathsheba she got pregnant had a baby so Nathan did not rebuke David right after the adultery. Nathan did not rebuke David uh, right after uh, Bathsheba uh, came to live with him. Nathan did not rebuke David after the baby was born. He was, he, he, there was a timing. It was at least nine months. See, but sometimes we see issues in our leaders and we think, well, you know, I just, I, you know, when should I rebuke them? When should I go to them and correct them? Well, first of all, the Bible says don't, do not rebuke an elder. So you better know for sure that you are being led by the Lord to bring a rebuke. I remember one time many years ago, my mentor, my spiritual mother, whom I adored, I still do. Uh, I don't, we don't, uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't remember exactly what it was uh, regarding, uh, but the Lord had me to say something to her. She was feeling disconnected from um, so the leaders in the church, and she was, she had made a comment to me. We had spent some time together, and she said, you know, I just feel disconnected. I was surprised she mentioned it, but it was on her heart. And, I, and, and the Lord had me to call her and say, the reason why you feel disconnected is because you disconnected yourself. And I thought I was just offering a word of wisdom that would encourage her. I didn't know that uh, what happened next was going to shock me. She said to me, she said, I receive your rebuke. And I said, well, yeah, uh, no, 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 no. I am not rebuking you. I, I just felt like the Lord showed me that. And I thought it would encourage you that, you know, it's, you're not being rejected and you're not being left out. You're, you're feeling disconnected because you actually have disconnected yourself. She goes, no, that was the Lord. And I received the rebuke and I thank you for it. Now, first of all, what humility uh, that leader had uh, to listen to me, who was like just a few years old in the Lord. Uh, but again, my heart was not to rebuke. My heart was, was to help, but the Lord used me to show her something that she couldn't see. And the Lord used Nathan to show David something that he apparently couldn't see because he was deceived. He was deceived. Nathan said to David, you are this man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anoint, here comes the strong rebuke. I anointed you as king over Israel and I, and, I rec- and I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you to your master's house and your mo- master's wives. I gave your master's house and your master's wives into your arms. And I gave to you the house of Israel and Judah. If this were too little, <laughs> I would have continued to do so much more for you. Why have you despised the word of the Lord by doing evil at his sight? You struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and you took his wife as a wife for yourself. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now the sword will never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, see, I will raise up trouble against you from within your own house. I will take your wives before your eyes and will give them to your neighbor, and he will lie with your wives in broad daylight. Although you did it secretly, I will do this thing before all of Israel and under the sun. Then David said to Nathan, 
I have sinned against the Lord. But you know what? It was for the better because David was then able to repent. And as long as David was in this condition and without having received a rebuke, he would not have repented and God knows what would have happened. There is a time to bring a rebuke. But you must be led of the Lord. You must use wisdom. And you must be in the specific timing of the Lord. Otherwise, you're going to make a mess. And you're going to bring mega warfare on yourself. You could ruin a relationship. And you know, you're not called to rebuke your leaders. There, there are times when the Lord might have you say something. But for the most part, your job is to pray. Nathan did. He was used to the Lord to rebuke his leader. But he probably discerned something was going on long before that and didn't take it into his own hands to criticize or rebuke. Amen. Our first line is always to pray, and that is where we will get our instructions as to what more we should do. I want to remind you, you can sow into this ministry at jenniferleclair.org. You can find all of your equipping resources at school of the spirit dot tv i want to pray father i thank you in jesus name for your goodness and your mercy god make us sensitive to your heart that if we re require correction if we require discipline if we require a rebuke that we can receive it from your heart from your spirit because you are the kindest one that we know we would rather receive rebuke from you than anyone else but the bible says in proverbs that the that the the, the rebuke of a friend is better than the kisses of an enemy and so, Father, help us to be willing, if you want to use us as an agent of rebuke, to do so, but to only do it in your way, your word, your timing, not to presume that we're the rebuke master and play Holy Ghost Junior and walk in a critical spirit. Lord, help us to be led by your spirit in everything we do in Jesus' name. I hope that helped you today. You can find me online at jenniferleclair.org.